Hello everyone, today we read and comment on the 16th paragraph of the second chapter of the second book of von Clausewitz von Krieg. It's titled being Principal Difficulty of a Theory for the Conduct of War. The text follows. In order to comprehend clearly the difficulty of the proposition which is contained in a theory for the conduct of war, and thence to deduce the necessary characteristics of such a theory, we must take a closer view of the chief particulars which make up the nature of activity in war. So this is obviously being a very short video given that uh, von Clausewitz simply announces what he's going to do now in explaining fundamentally what are the characters of war on the, on the, basis, um, on the basis of which uh, a theory of the art of war should be built, right? Uh, he writes simply, in order to comprehend clearly the difficulty of the proposition, which is contained in a theory for the conduct of war, mm, and thence to deduce the necessary characteristics of such a theory, we must take a closer view of the chief particulars which make up the nature of activity in war, meaning what that um, up to now we have observed and rejected all the uh, uh, bases, uh, at least in their positivistic intent, in their positive intent in construction of, a, of the theory of the art of war. Uh, uh, as they were conceived right before von Clausewitz, mm, so chiefly uh, a material dimension of war, as we've seen, that considered like numbers, quantities, right, and fundamentally ignored what constantly changes, which is in fact the most important element, and which are the moral forces, but not only, right? Um, because here, for cause of it's fundamentally, will open to to a list of a very long list of paragraphs that are extremely interesting, which tell you literally all the factors. Right, can intervene to to mess up a positive theory of the art of war. Right, uh, simply showing that every single situation that ever happens at any time, everywhere, is always different. That there is not a single anything that is alike in the whole history of mankind. Right, and 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 beyond. Right, um, it's. Um, it's it's quite important, of course, uh, not just to, of course, uh, make you reflect on all the various factors that can have an effect in war, but objectively for shaping better the the method that should be employed in order to understand the military phenomena. All right, so it, it's chiefly a conceptual um, track that you have to keep. Uh, view of uh, all, uh, at all times because if you get lost into it you, you, and you focus on all, all, only one of these factors you're simply ending in the same uh, in the same mistake that that's the real problem with with it and this is why this thing is so useful now with this list that is gonna uh, is gonna start is so useful because it makes you realize of how you can't practically keep track of all the things that happen at the same time altogether. You can't rely on just one of them. And in the previous paragraph, however, von Clausewitz has already showed us how fundamentally moral forces by themselves uh, are practically non-measurable. Right? Uh, they obviously have an impact. That there is a way to to assess them, um, even to loosely quantify them, like um, understanding, of course, whether uh, very, very evenly if, if an enemy is willing to fight or not, or what, but still their motives can be changing, the reasons can be unknown, um, we may fail to even interpret what is, what is going on. So when it comes to moral forces, well, these alone uh, create the major problem, right? And, and that's why von Clausewitz conceives war essentially as a clash between moral forces, and this is the single most important thing that has to be taken into consideration. So, uh, up to now, we have observed generally what the, the world problem is. Then, von Clausewitz shows us what the deal is in detail, right? Um, from the next paragraph uh, onwards till till the end of the of the chapter. So. Um, 
so your proposition was contained if you're okay introduce necessary characteristics right okay so methodologically speaking he is what he's doing here is also showing us as we said um, what are the uh, aspects of a theory of the art award that can have a positive impact on the wall right not really solving this uh, indecipherable equation about which we we don't know so many variables that fundamentally we, we can't even start how to, to solve it but secondly um, re but but realizing however that there are certain elements that are uh, experienceable like can can be observed uh, that on the basis of which we have to to work anyway right um, the fact that there, there, there can't be a positive theory in this sense doesn't mean that we can't literally do nothing about that that we are simply you know floating into nothingness without being able to to do anything about it there is something we can do and very often this is what is needed to cope with the, the problem uh, in war this is all the more meaningful because we are not really questioning at that point to our existential uh, you know our existence our think about our existential problems we're actually engaged into a fight mm -hmm. so if you want there is a positive object right uh, our objective through violence through war is to to uh, compel our enemy to fulfill our will right uh, in absolute terms right this takes um, different uh, forms like it all depends on how committed we are why we engage into that and uh, we can sometimes even uh, come out of that without uh, you know too many troubles you know it, but it all depends on the motives that lead us to do certain things right and um, how a human being works uh, obviously is different from how a state works and this is what we will especially uh, look at in the next paragraph where there is this interesting sense of um, you know about hostile feelings and the views that individuals and, and policies can have and and how moral forces interact with them right so the sense of a style feeling that comes and goes right it's um, it's very difficult to um, to 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 guide because it can break uh, break out uh, very suddenly right even for irrational reasons this is also what von Clausewitz observes that there is a kind of an animal like character in, uh, in human nature that makes us hate automatically anyone who maybe contrasts us and creates this sense of problem to us and our reaction at that point is important because um, in certain cases it can be channeled positively speaking and if you think about that um, it's like um, you know when when you see something that you don't like like my videos for example and that you you know you say oh well, what is what is what the hell is this guy doing oh my god I, I hate him because he's talking about stuff that uh, you know I know better and I want to prove him wrong therefore you you maybe you start doing something about that you know and you come here and you make a video and you destroy all my uh, von Clausewitz system good luck with that <laughs> because you have you don't have to destroy me you have to destroy von Clausewitz which is a <laughs> much greater challenge I, I can assure you um, and uh, but applicating yourself and growing and and uh, evolving and then yeah I, I don't talk much about myself but I must say one of the reasons for uh, why I make these videos is objectively that I, I you know getting acquainted to certain topics that I talk about in here including history war um, von Clausewitz etc I, I I thought that certain things that are told uh, everywhere uh, but especially on YouTube or you know for, for what whichever reason you, you understand immediately how difficult it is to even explain what we do right and this is mostly due to moral forces this is nothing to do with how much it takes me to, to upload videos or uh, how much time I, I spend to work these things out and to prepare myself this has to do with the will that I have to, to make this and this is what von Clausewitz is telling us here that it, that's the single most important thing it's not everything it's not everything even the material dimension is important 
right? Even the one on which um, the previous military theorists had based themselves, thinking to say, you know, that's the only measurable thing, right? In kind of like in mechanical um, uh, science, that you can ap apply that, you know, and that will work independently of what uh, someone's uh, intentions are, right? Um, when we talk about politics, society, and and war as a consequence, we can't we can't approach the matter like that. We have to be uh, much more open to uh, the idea we will fail if we apply the, if we applicate that uh, that that approach right that and and believe me most of the political and military disasters are due to this approach right and there this is the the core of the of the concept because it makes you understand it's not about the constant lack of, of knowledge of what is happening. It's not that winners are those who sort everything out and the others does it or does it less. It's the other way around. Uh, winners on average are those who accept the idea that they can't do something about the contingency and the losers are those who overlooked the contingency right, and believe they could win a war just because, I don't know, originally they planned it better and they didn't uh, expect that it would turn in a way that they they uh, it li like it did right they didn't have abilities or resources to cope with that change right so in other words approaching the thing in a positive fashion that is you know thinking that a plan uh, is good no matter what and that it doesn't have to be changed why well, we know that every plan changes at the same at the first contact with the enemy by definition so um, this thinking is um, essentially very positive because, in other words, it shows uh, what we already do every day in our life. We do live in a world that we do not know. Uh, we live in a dimension that we don't understand basically anything about. Like, we think that our maths or physics is somewhat who knows what. It's, it's just a language that we use to decipher certain things that happen. For, for the rest of it, it's just darkness out there. We, we don't know what we're doing in here. We don't even know whether we, ex we factually exist. Right? We, there is no proof of any kind uh, of existence of anything that surrounds us. Yet, we, we still live on. And we still do things. And for what we are concerned, they, they work satisfactorily enough for certain standards that are obviously set on a, you know, on our biological, uh, you know, structure. Um, so, um, and, and therefore, even towards war, I it gives you this um, positive feeling that you can, a positive awareness in general, that, that empowers you, that makes you more self-confident, that, that is to say, yeah, okay, I know that the worst can happen at every time, but at least I know that. And at least by knowing that, I'm a bit, I'm going to be a bit more prepared, actually, than, um, than who thinks that the whole deal is simply, you know, thinking that a preset, pre-orderly system can be applied, uh, uh, can, can work, can, uh, can be functional to something that fundamentally we don't even know anything about. And those are pure, that is pure sophistry, that is pure sp speculation, right? It, it's an abstraction. And for Clausewitz, it says, vo to, to vo 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 whichever general thinks to win a war in a, I in a fashion like that. So this is von Clausewitz's objective, like very, very clearly. And um, so you see here, he makes this, he writes this paragraph that is pretty short. And you'd say, well, why? Well, because he still makes you reflect on this aspect of the story. I mean, if you're reading this fast, of course, you say, oh, yeah, now this guy's going to explain that thing. Yeah, but, you know, if you're here just to understand it a bit, a bit more deeply, you realize that it, it's, it's also ordering here um, the, the general thinking of what he's going to do in order to make you, because he already knows these things. He already has this thing in his head. He was just writing down before he died. Uh, and um, he he knows um, he because he cares about you understanding that. that's the greatness of this man so never underestimate what he's doing here uh, and why he's doing this right 
and there is always no word is out of place right even when uh, it happens that there are certain definitions that are a bit kind of uh, metaphorical maybe then strictly categorical uh, he is still talking to you at a kind of a deeper level he's trying to make you understand a an aspect of that uh, topic that at that point is crucial to understand for the structure of the work that is it works like a, a, as, a, as a big explanation right it is very subtle it's very precise it's very intelligent and very insightful indeed um, so he's looking here for the necessary character to deduce right the necessary characteristics of the theory of the art of war right um, that that's the objective that there is no other point for which this book has been written but to give you a theory that you can you can applicate right with some sort of utility right so not with the objective to to solve everything through it but of being aware of what can happen so this is this sounds like a negative approach and in a certain sense it is right he is uh, taking out what uh, is dangerous to make you think in a way that by acknowledging that you can't do a very few paradoxically is helping you more than promising you you know eternal victory <laughs> right um, perennial victory just because you follow you know a bunch of equations right like the guys who were uh, writing the the concept of the internal lines and all this stuff in, in those years were, were pretending to do were pr yeah um, so um, what to, so he says in order to, to, to achieve this objective we must take a closer view of the chief particulars which make up the nature of activity in war right and this is what basically we have already encountered I mean since the the first uh, the very first words of the von Krieg you know when when he starts talking about what war essentially is but as if it was um, um, uh, an abstracted activity right so telling us in, in the essentials what this is but demonstrating ex absurdo how things really are step by step and therefore complicating the picture you what ultimately turns into apparently like complete uh, impossibility of deciphering the whole thing in in in, ac in in terms of action in terms of what you have to do right because for Cla for, for Clausewitz it's always very clear what war is what politics is how s uh, society is there, there's a crystalline picture of how th the world mechanism works and it's very simple and it's really like that you know this is also a very important teaching that what we usually think it's complicated actually it's just a, a simple thing that however is difficult to understand as such because it's it we because it's based on certain principles that are different from your own uh, so it's not about the simplicity but uh, excuse me the 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 the, the comp uh, you know the comp mm, yeah the complicated character of the thing let's say but uh, but simply the the way we look at it right so for von Kohlitz, that's always clear what becomes extremely difficult if not impossible by large margin to understand is how every time this thing takes shape let's say right and that's why he now starts with a list of paragraphs to show us all the factors that are gonna be involved in here this, th and this is amazing and I can't list you the, the title uh, of the of the very many paragraphs that already tell you what how messed up this thing is because the first specialty says moral forces and their effects in brackets hostile feeling then the impressions of danger that is courage uh, extent of influence uh, I mean uh, yeah okay in brackets courage let's say the extent of the influence of danger other powers of feeling peculiarity of mind um, living reaction which is the second peculiarity then the third peculiarity uh, the uncertainty of all data positive theory is impossible this is the conclusion 
right? And uh, there is um, now the uh, that that's a kind of a spoiler, right? He actually goes on with all the factors more in detail, and he explains actually in um, other conceptual things. And now we skip, but I wanted to get you to the. Um, uh, the circumstances which always attend the application of the means, right? And here the list is locality, time of day, weather, and the means and strategy. Circumstances which attend the application of the means of strategy uh, uh, that turn that in turn form new means. Um, then um, he goes on because here it actually gets into a system that at this moment we we don't have a time to explain but the the sum of this is that science must become art as a general consequence and which is you know we we've, we've basically already seen all of these aspects before for Clausewitz has entered at um, he has already showed us essentially what the deal he is but he will explain them uh, more clearly in the way they're all chained now right so just be prepared for this because it's it's extremely interesting in the next videos. Um, so yeah, and these are called the chief particulars which make up the nature of activity in war, right? This is important. It's not about the pure theory, it's about the action, right? Clausewitz is not interested in pure speculations, in abstractions. He doesn't care. He wants something that works and that works well. That is not just like a uh, simple, um, uh, you know, uh, idea. Like uh, now, I tell you how war is complicated and and uh, uh, and uh, therefore it's difficult. No, he's actually telling you w how every factor inter uh, messes up the equation and how you can get through that in spite of it obviously not once again with the certainty of making it true but with the right mindset right so mm, uh, I I know I, it's kind of difficult to to understand w what I'm talking about in the first place because until you you read it you uh, it's difficult even to explain it in, in, in a few words but we will get it we will read it. Um, and in general, <laughs> um, reflect just as a preliminary action, like on before reading these chapters, these paragraphs. Excuse me. Um, what's the general attitude that you personally have, or that you look at around yourself when it comes to talking about war? Um, every kind of like every war, like it doesn't have to be just ancient or uh, like old or current. It, it's it's everything is history, um, and you can be extremely surprised uh, by the, the comparison that we will see. Because um, I I would say for for what I'm concerned is is that at least what I see around seems to be either um, a, a on two levels that is two extremes like the the most individual uh, slash emotional um, aspect of war that is what normally even I don't know in the entertainment industry or the documentary seem to be interested in that is not understanding, for example, strategy or tactics, but ju just what the individual guy on, on the ground thinks or does, right? As if that was th the most important thing in war, which is exactly the, the opposite. Like, that's not <laughs> the most important thing at all, but it's, if anything, it's, it's you should start from strategy, right? But m before then that, that, you know, even beyond war, in politics and society, w that, that without that you can't do... If you, if you pretend to study war without like eliminating it from politics and society you can't study war like do something else if you really can't <laughs> do without in that sense you, you that's also another attitude in fact that sometimes happens like ah people think about war this kind of uh, uh, what turns out 
unavoidably in an individualistic take on uh, on that, like in a tri even tribal kind of instinctual way, like just trying to imagine what it means to, to be on the field and to be kind of a fighter, right? Because uh, uh, as soon as you get uh, 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 acquainted with uh, more complex levels, even if you get from the single soldier to the squad level, right? You immediately understand that there is something more than that. That is not uh, that uh, fierce kind of warrior tribalistic uh, thing, but it's actually reason. It is actually real intelligence, right? It, it has to do with the impression that you feel, right? People are, are obsessed by this kind of uh, by emotions for the sake of them, right? That that's not the point. Uh, that's why war and who leads war gets uh, and is sometimes mistakenly understood as desensitized to, to that, right? Uh, because they think, how oh, the general doesn't care the soldier on the ground. Um, no, uh, that's also a very political statement. It's sometimes anti military, uh, anti military, or um, maybe it's even pro military, but in a sense of an orphan like um, feeling of someone who feels abandoned by the superiors. Or obviously, it's plenty of, uh, of episodes in history where such things happen, but they're can't say, I mean, th th it sounds bad, but it, they're, they're actually the exception. Like a real military of a real state normally knows what it's doing, right? At least from a, at an operational level, uh, if you, uh, if you have a man, a political mandate, and, and normally who, who, the people who are entrusted with this mandate know what they have to do. And that's why, um, and that's why also sometimes the general approach to this topic is something similar to, oh well, the that military is incompetent, or um, it doesn't like it's fault of the soldiers because they are cowards and stuff like that. Because people fundamentally, at large, do not understand what um, the uh, the the main uh, let's say determining factors. In in waging a war are in terms of also of outcome and but of the pre-existing decision that decided that that thing to happen right now I'm getting a bit um, I'm digressing a bit but these are all perspectives sometimes there is just a perspective instead oh yeah the the the, the politicians are the evil bad guys that think about just profit. And it's just about those corrupt politicians. And no, it, it, you know, politics has bears basically all the responsibility for war because war, in itself, doesn't kill anyone. It's politics that does because war is a political act, as well as an act of violence. Hence, war is literally the rifle shot by politics, right? And doesn't in itself it doesn't do anything wrong. Um, war proper. Right, do not confuse this with the material side of the story once again, like weapons or and their destructive capability. We're talking just about the instrument as such. Um, that's another very you know, very common perception, right? But the idea is that yeah, of course, war uh can and is used normally as as a business. It's a pretty profitable business, if you know how you know, if you get lucky, if you gamble it's it's always a gamble, right? But uh, the point is that society agrees with that. Like you can't look at politics and thinking that that's dissociated from society, right? Because if uh, you know, well, here it gets complicated once again because I'm I'm throwing their examples. But the concept is um, wars can be fought, of course, for for. Uh, there are many, let's say, wrong wars, wars that could have easily been not started because they were too stupid, <laughs> right? Uh, apparently. Most of the times, what, what actually happens is much more complex. Um, it has to do with all of, of the Clausewitz uh, trinity in terms of individual responsibility. It has to do with politics, with the military, with society. 
uh, th the point is that normally uh, who is at the top is m more competent than the average person um, and if something happens and is decided the the choice has been on average cleverer than at least the average social opinion is uh, always takes this uh, take this as a general approach to the story even to like to every society right uh, it sounds I know it sounds sometimes can can sound um, kind of uh, not I wouldn't say insulting necessarily but of course th there are plenty of corrupt governments that did pretty messed up things and uh, even in civilized countries etc but um, normally uh, you know you you're not better as an average uh, element of that society than who decides at the top in terms of possibility of achieving something right or incompetence right um, it sounds yeah I know it sounds tough to, to say especially when you think you're more intelligent than anyone else <laughs> right um, it may be true as well but it, it's not let's say it's not about you it's about the average proper and about that society because if that if all society was like you in that case probably things would be better even at the top and even better than than you right this is the, the, the message in it so wars are not fought just for the rich uh, you know fat guys smoking uh, cigars at the top of a you know a pile of money while the poor exploited soldier gets out there to get killed uh, wars are fought collectively and um, this is very important to understand because politics without um, like uh, without pop uh, without social support cannot wage uh, cannot take action by definition uh, you can um, uh, this is also complex we will enter into let's say because if it's in sociology we are already actually discussed this but th the concept is that if uh, the majority of the people is not with you uh, you can't fight a war uh, you'll say oh well but what about uh, certain dictatorships the people was with them and this is a very heavy statement and and but and and probably if you consider it as such it's because you fall in fact in another misconception that is generally ah um, those poor guys were just sent by the bloody dictator to to fight no those guys were m most likely like the, that dictator right uh, let's uh, eradicate violently this myth that um, soldiers of uh, dictatorships or totalitarianisms are just poor scapegoats or sheep that are sent to be butchered because there is an evil guy at the top who makes ha 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 and all of this stuff um, responsibility for I don't know what uh, what uh, Nazi Germany Soviet Union fascist Italy fascist Japan uh, communist China whatever did falls on those peoples right and uh, it's always been like that and this applies for every single country because it doesn't matter f from which country you come from all of your uh, of our governments made something pretty messed up back in the day uh, at, at some point and the the political responsibility is collective because it's your own civic responsibility you can't say well you know the, the, the poor soldier was sent to the front because otherwise you would get shot yeah okay and so what so you you would you you basically s gave up the opportunity of existing with means that you could achieve, you could have really um, constantly. Um, banal example: uh, Adolf Hitler was democratically elected. Uh, Adolf Hitler was democratically elected by the majority of the German people. So don't come to tell me things like, you know, that's not really their fault because you know he was just a sick dictator. No, this is a uh, this is a pretty twisted um, 
idea that exists, especially in a certain part of the West, uh, that is obsessed with the idea of tyranny, like the idea that there is the, the, the individual bad evil guy that is responsible for the whole thing. No, it's society that works as a whole thing. Uh, people don't get to the top of society because they, they crush everyone else. It's because they're brought there by society, right? So, um, it's... Um, I know it's, it's somewhat difficult to 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 talk about this stuff because uh, even in the West, you know, say I, I'm a Western European myself, and when I think about I don't know the uh, the Russian Civil War, right? Uh, okay, in the West, our take on this has been, you know, those uh, a fucking Bolsheviks arrived and started massacring everyone who opposed them. This was an iron fist. Like they were all oppressed because they couldn't raise their hand because they were was ki they were killed. Um, it's not that easy. It's not that easy, and sometimes it doesn't even happen uh, intentionally speaking. I mean, even masses of millions of people actually do not care about certain things, or not. Um, the uh, the concept is that there is a breaking point of a society that depends, in fact, on the will of the individuals that are involved into the situation, right? So it's so if something goes disastrously wrong, things get to red. Uh, just like think one the uh, when Stalin decided to apply the, the hard communist economical policy on the Soviet Union, and uh, basically more people in 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 uh, Russia and its dependencies, let's call them like this. Um, died then I think that what during the entire First World War in Russia, I mean, uh that's when Stalin had to resume basically Trotsky's uh economical policy that was based on a partial privatization of certain industries, etc., because otherwise communism was have simply failed by itself and, and the, the world state would have collapsed and civil war would have ensued anyway. So in that case you see that there are certain cases which government can't uh, can do much about because it's not th that thing works like a machine uh, that is simply a mechanicistic thing. It, it works because there are people who who have to make it work. People who have guns, including um, including the military. I got very few people know that actually um, the the Russia the the Soviet Stavka by 1944, so the moment of apex of Stalin's power fundamentally uh, was about to make a coup to, to kill Stalin. Um, so that speaks for all the things that can get, that can easily go seriously messed up when uh, people, w when the people decide. And believe me, the people decides, right? We're not, we're not arrived in a moment in history where uh, we don't have the power to 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 make our change, right? Uh, so great part of what happens, even in the most ferocious atrocities that happen still in this world, in part is our fault, because individual responsibility, civic responsibility, is not about just uh, supporting actively someone. It also stands for not taking action. Uh, look around you. Look at what happens in uh, uh, in Eastern Europe. Look at what happens in Mediterranean. Uh, do we care about this? Just to say places that I'm closer to, but t take also a look at the rest of the world and see and see what happens. And you say, what are you personally? In, what, ask yourself, what are you personally doing for stopping this stuff? Not because you are directly responsible or necessarily your government is di directly responsible because chances are that it's enormously more complicated than that even a sing at a singular country's political level, right? Um, but what are you doing with your vote, with your voice to change that? And and I'm not challenging you to be like more moral than, <laughs> than you are, right? Hopefully, right? We can all do better. Uh, but there is also a kind of inertia and a kind of uh, um, uh, a kind of uh, you know of natural tendency to 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 avoid effort. That is what 
von Clausewitz talks about, and believe me, the 17th paragraph, especially that we will read uh, next time, is is very deep about this because it shows you how these f uh, mass uh, feelings of the masses, let's say, can be easily easily exploited by go uh, even by dictatorship. Of course, von Clausewitz didn't quite know what that was in the 19th century, uh, but let's say in terms of cohere coercion uh, there can be parallels to this to fuel those pulses so never for a single instant think that um, there is always an evil guy at the top who does the, the wrong thing right and this is a shame because actually modern politics is turning exactly into this like you can easily see it um, right-wingers, left-wingers, they're doing essentially the same identical thing. We're, they are all pushing for the demonization of, uh, of a hierarchy, uh, of, a, of, a, of a top great master planner of the world. This, uh, this gets intertwined easily with conspiracy theory, with other uh, stupid um, uh, you know, things that you, you can't imagine. Of. And, and just know that this channel would never support any of these behaviors. Here we, we actually we study from clauses. So this this is the 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 assurance uh, you know uh, I, uh, the security that this could yeah, of course I can't mis mis misunderstand, miscomprehend, mis mis explain, I don't know how to say that from clauses, but chances are is that I, I probably won't. Um and you can't read the von Krieg and study the von Krieg because that's what you have to do really if you really care about this stuff uh, uh, but just know that we will never give space to these people if someone comes on this channel and tries to push those agendas gets uh, eradicated um, and I can assure you that that's the case and um, here there is no space for so because those are weak um, uh, they're actually weak more than weak weak thinking and here a weak thinking loses if there is something that history teaches us is that those who win are regularly the weakest thinkers the weaker thinkers right so always bear in mind uh, and, and and just know that there is a beyond at, at whichever state you are of your uh, you know uh, intellectual development in your education your life just always know that there is a next step you can take and there, there are infinite ones right and we we can uh, we, we d it's plenty of things to learn there is never an, a point of arrival it's always going ahead and progressing if you dare because the more you go on this is not like the paradise uh, like of heaven everything is nice and then and cute. No, because the more this progresses and the more this becomes unbearable because it entails an enormous responsibility and burning resources, but at the same time it's worth the pain. Because I personally believe that it's much more important to, to, to accomplish something than being happy, for example. And uh, I, I think that that's the true objective of mankind, to, to struggle for it to to take the next step because that's the best thing we can do morally ethically towards anyone towards ourselves towards the others right so never stop if you stop you're lost never stop to a point and think that that's where you arrived and that it has to be so doesn't matter how old how wise you think you are you can always do infinitely better than what you can so this this is valid for everyone. This is the beauty of it. And yeah, um, all right. I think for today we can stop here. I'm getting preachier and preachier uh, the more <laughs> I I go on. But uh, all right. I hope you 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 don't mind. But it's not a problem considering how many people watch this videos that <laughs> it's not an event to hold um, alright so okay for today it's everything 
Um, I, if you enjoyed this video, please share it, otherwise leave a like or subscribe to my channel if you're interested in my upcoming contents. And for now, I thank you heartily for listening to me. I wish you a nice time and see you next time.